That's it. I'm done with Ultra Shoes. When I first found the brand Ultra back in 2019, I fell in absolute love. Not only did I say goodbye to my plantar fasciitis, but I also really felt super strong and nimble in my foot as I was getting used to the Zero Drop platform. Now, I used this brand exclusively for five years and was even on the Ultra Red Team last year. But I am finally done with this shoe brand and it doesn't sound like I am the only one. I'm gonna get into why I'm finally done with this brand and then the shoes that I'm gonna be actually switching to next. Now, this info is gonna be given to you in layman's terms. I'm not the ginger runner. I, I don't review things like that, but I am a through hiker, I am a trail runner. And I'm guessing you are as well if you're watching this video. What I know is that our feet are important and that we're putting tons and tons of miles on our shoes every year. And that's one of the reasons why I'm dumping Ultra is the durability issues. But not only that, also their warranty. I get that trail runners as a whole are going to blow out faster than something like a boot. And I was willing to pay for that trade. However, the durability issues for me started with the Lone Peak 4 on the Colorado Trail. And I noticed it started to blow out on the fronts and on the sides around 200 miles. Now, this is a brand new shoe that I brought into the Colorado Trail. I made sure it was brand new because I wanted to start the trail fresh. This forced me to go and spend an extra day hitching into Salida and picking up a different pair of shoes. Now, when I got home, I actually emailed Ultra and they were receptive to my response and they actually replaced that shoe, which increased my trust in them. But then came the next year when I picked up these Timp 4s. Now I had about 100 miles on these and what started happening was the traction started actually stripping off. As you can tell here, this part just actually just stripped right off. So there was no grip. There's not even a lot of grip on these Timp 4s anyways, but now you get rid of that all of this was stripped here. I was actually trying to super glue this back, but it kept just stripping off. Same thing on this shoe as well. So when I got back from my trip in Utah, I emailed Ultra again and explained to them what happened. And basically my warranty got denied on this. And I kind of fired back a pretty heated email because this was obviously the second year in a row that I've had an issue with my Ultras. Now, fast forward another year and I picked up a, another pair of Timp 4s, I guess kind of stupidly. And under 150 miles, this is what happened. A complete rupture and blowout of not only one side of the shoe, but also the other shoe, same way. If you really think about this, I am basically paying $1 for every mile that I'm running in this shoe. And that just does not sit right with me. These were $150 retail and they lasted about 150 miles, even less than that. And this really just proves a point that I cannot trust the brand of Ultra anymore, especially if that was to happen in the middle of a through hike, the middle of the Sierra Nevada, the North Cascades, some big place where you're kind of isolated and you have a big shoe blowout. Just imagine what that's gonna do to your feet. Now, to me, the Timp was a great shoe. I really enjoyed the fact that it had a lot more cushion than the Lone Peak, still had the zero drop, still had a decent wide foot splay. But the one thing that I could never get over was the fact that it was just so slick. I mean, look at the lugs on these. They really don't have anything for lugs at all. And then add in the fact that they start stripping off and you really have zero grip. So what do I need in a shoe going forward? Well, number one is going to be obviously durability. I can't be spending $150 every 150 miles that I do in a shoe. That's just not going to pan out. The second thing is I still want wide toe box. I tried some Hoka Speed Goats when I was on the Colorado Trail and had to get that hitch in. And while they were durable, they were really, really tight. And that's where I got blisters on my pinkies. And so I really did not enjoy that at all. And plus they kind of looked like clown shoes. Next, they need decent traction. I mean, I just don't understand why Ultra can't partner with Vibram to get some kind of nice traction on the bottom of your feet so you actually feel secure when you're doing any kind of muddy or wet conditions. Next is minimal drop. I do really enjoy the zero drop platform that Ultra created, but I don't absolutely have to do zero drop, but it, if there is some kind of shoe that has a small millimeter drop, that will work for me too. But I don't wanna have a huge stack height kind of like the Hoka Speed Goat. And then the last thing is I want some cushion on there. This Lone Peak, I believe four or five, performed actually pretty decent for me 
on the you went to Highline this year. I mean, you do have some like tears and rips and stuff like that, but this was a pretty gnarly freaking trail. The fact that there actually isn't any holes or blowouts in these is actually quite amazing. But the one thing that I couldn't get over was the fact because it was so freaking rocky, my feet just hurt so bad at the end of every day. There's just no cushion on these on peaks. So what am I switching to? I'm gonna be trying out these Topo Ultra Adventures. This is a shoe that has been recommended to me by a ton of through hikers and trail runners alike that I know and trust their opinions. The really cool thing about this is that it's got a five millimeter drop, which isn't too bad at all. I still got a wide toe box and it looks like it's going to be a lot more durable than an Ultra. It's got some cushioning as well. It's got the Vibram sole. So I'll be doing a thorough review on these in a later video. So make sure that you tune in for that. I'd love to hear in the comments your recent experiences have been with Ultra. From what I've heard, Ultra was bought out a couple years ago and from there, the durability has just kind of tanked. So I would love to hear other people's experiences and if they're gonna continue to use Ultra despite some of these big drawbacks. Here's a video I think you'll like next. Thanks for watching. We'll see you for the next one.